Hey there, I'm the self-proclaimed GD&T guy, and you are on video six of a deep dive into a somewhat niche topic in the world of mechanical design, engineering drawings, and geometric dimensioning and tolerancing, aka GD&T. If you like this video, please like and subscribe so you get the rest of them in your feed. Also, please comment with your agreements and disagreements and help me identify any mistakes that I've made. In the video descriptions, I will post a link to where you can find PDFs of all the drawings I discuss, so you can pause and look at them yourself. Okay, let's go. This is a discussion about the use of dowel pins as locating features in machined parts and how we can apply tolerances to these features on engineering drawings. Welcome back. Last video, we talked about this blue part here that uses a close fitting hole and a slot to locate onto this gray part here that uses two dowel pins pressed into it. I told you then that the hole and slot part is quite elegant and straightforward in the GD&T system of datum reference frames. The part with the dowel pins has got just a few additional quirks to take note of, but it's nothing you smart people can't handle. So just to remind you how I'm thinking about this, this gray object is just a small detail area of a larger part that we just can't see, okay? And maybe this part has several interfaces just like this on it or other interfaces. It probably has other features which locate it into another assembly. Those are gonna be datum features for this gray part, but we can't see them. So let's go into the drawing, which is GDTG00401. Just for starters, I have a couple of general notes I wanna show you. The first is note one, which just explains what I told you about this being just a detail area of a larger part. There's a note here about the bulk aluminum material, deburring, anodization, and then we get to flag note five. This one has a lot going on. For starters, I'm making it very clear. I expect my supplier to install the dowel pins. I tell them that I want an FN2 force fit on the pins. Now I'm in a little bit of a bind here because I can't inspect the holes once I receive my parts with the pins installed. So I have to trust my supplier. Or if you prefer trust but verify, I guess you could ask that the FN2 holes be measured and recorded as part of a supplier inspection report. And finally, on this flag note five, I say tolerances and datum references apply to the protruding portions of the installed dowel pins. Nice. This is one of those things you may hope is obvious, but I'm not sure it is until we say it. All right, that's the general notes for this drawing. And now let's look at the large flat surface I know will be my primary datum feature for this interface. Here's the call out. It's interesting that there's quite a bit I can understand about this part just from this. For starters, I'm asking for 6,000th parallelism to datum A. So even though I can't see the datum A feature on this detail, I know it must be nominally parallel to this surface, the relief surface, the bottom surface, etc. I'm pretty sure there must also be a dimension, maybe a plus minus tolerance from datum A to this feature. I have flatness control, and then I call this surface my datum M feature. Most of us work from datum A up, B, C, D, E. So if we're at datum M, it's a fair guess that this is just one of several interfaces on this part. And on that note, don't ever hold yourself to any ridiculous rules about a maximum number of datum features on a drawing. If you have a part with a lot of interfaces to other parts, which is perfectly reasonable, you are going to have a lot of datums, and that is just fine. Giving these features a name, a datum letter, should make a complicated part more understandable if you do it right. It'll be a more precise communication of the relationship between features and your intent as the designer. Terrific. Let's move on to the dowel pins. Here I have my flag note five, which had quite a bit of information about how these pins are installed and used as datum features. You'll see it's a 2X, and I also provide their size limit as reference. Reference just because the machinist has no control over the size of the dowel pins, but I still want to be able to do some math with these numbers. And below that, I have two frames of position control and one frame of orientation control. The top frame with the loosest tolerance controls the position of these pins within datum reference frame A, B, C. My super GD&T guy senses are really starting to think that these 
A, B, and C are the features which locate the larger part in the assembly. If this were a drawing of that big part, and not just a little detail, I would expect to see some basic dimensions from those B and C features to these pins. And if datum C is some kind of center plane, then there could be a dimension from a center line to the pins. This pattern of pins looks like it's at some angle, so maybe there'd even be a basic angle dimension to these. Whatever communicates the intent best. The point is that those basic dimensions would locate these pins in the Cartesian space of datum reference frame ABC. And then this feature control frame here provides a tolerance. Perhaps it's a relatively loose tolerance too, because it may be hard to locate these pins with great accuracy, especially if the datum features are machined in a different setup or if there are large distances. But you will have to balance that against your positional requirements for this interface and the part it locates. Hopefully you can do good enough. Anyway, I think the inspection of this top frame is probably a good job for the CMM, the Coordinate Measuring Machine. The next frame has a tighter tolerance, but this one only references datum M as primary. All this one is really doing is controlling the positions of these pins as a pattern related to that flat surface. So this one is totally independent from that datum reference frame ABC. It's a separate requirement. Nevertheless, the part would have to pass both inspections. Okay, so we take the 4,000th position tolerance plus the MMC size of the pins, 0 0.2503, and we get 0 0.2543 as a virtual condition. This gauge here, real or imaginary, is a good way to visualize this requirement. Remember from previous videos that I make these purple so you can tell when you're looking at one. And for our purposes, you can consider them perfect in their geometry, harder than steel, etc. For this one, we'll call this perfectly flat surface here our datum M simulator. These two holes are sized at 0.2543. Remember, our virtual condition for this datum reference frame. And because this is one of our gauges, the holes are perfectly spaced apart, exact in their size, and perfectly perpendicular to the datum M simulator. And if you've been paying attention, you've probably guessed that we would have to be able to place this gauge down over the pins on our part until the datum M simulator came into full contact. If we look straight down, you can see the very small amount of clearance. This is a visual depiction of the tolerance. It is not a lot of tolerance, but it could be achievable because the flat surface and the pinholes can be machined in one setup. And I don't think it's necessary to tighten it up much farther. The reason is that in our next part, which I showed in the previous video, we have a slot to locate on one of these pins, so we can tolerate quite a bit of in-pattern positional error. But I guess I recommend that you control it at least a little. Otherwise, you could start to see some weird effects if there was a lot of variation. Let's move down to the next frame, perpendicularity, which is our tightest of all at four tenths. If we add that to our pin MMC, we get a virtual condition of 0 0.2507. So let's remember that. Now have a look at this. I put a note that says individually next to this tolerance. So far in this call out, we've been talking about a pattern of 2x dowel pins, but I don't think you can have perpendicularity of a pattern of dowel pins. So I say individually here. And then there's one other interesting thing that I'm doing to draw a distinction between these two pins. And that is that I also have a reference dimension to each of them and attached to those datum feature symbols. So now this pin is the datum N feature. We skip O because it can look like a zero. And this one is the datum P feature. I know that in this interface, the datum M feature is a primary datum feature that will constrain the next part in three degrees of freedom. I know that the datum N pin is a secondary datum feature that will locate the hole in the next part and constrain it in two degrees of freedom. And I know that the datum P pin is a tertiary datum feature that will locate on the slot and constrain the sixth and final degree of freedom. But none of that is apparent until we see it in a datum reference frame like this one for the threaded holes. Now this is where things do get a little tricky, so stick with me, okay? These are quarter 20 threaded holes, class 2B with a major diameter of 250. The position tolerance is 20 thousandths, so we add that to the 250 and we have yet another virtual condition number to remember, 270. 
0.2507 for the pin perpendicularity VC and 270 for the threaded hole position VC. Got it. Also take a note of this projected tolerance zone, which says that the tolerance zone is up out of the hole, above the surface of the part, into the volume of the next part. This is the right thing to do for most threaded holes. And then here we have our datum references, M primary, N secondary, and P tertiary, but with this triangle symbol. The triangle symbol is the translating datum modifier. This symbol is new and it may cause some discomfort, but it is exactly suited to our purposes here when we have a slot in the next part to locate on this pin. And I will show you what I mean with this next gauge. This one has a datum M simulator and a datum N simulator. The datum N simulator is sized at 0.2507 diameter. Remember the virtual condition of the pin perpendicularity? This can also be called our maximum material boundary for simulating datum N. And then over here we have our datum P simulator hole. This one has the same 0.2507 size, only it's on a sliding mechanism. I put this screw in here to retain the slider. I'm sorry if it's confusing. Let's just say I put some thread locker on the screw and tightened it just enough to where the mechanism can still slide freely. If we are able to place this gauge down over our pins to full contact with the datum M simulator, we have verified the perpendicularity of the pins. But another thing we've done with this gauge is to simulate the datum reference frame M and P with N at MMB and P at MMB and translating. Which brings us to another great function of this gauge. We can use it to inspect the position of the threaded holes. On the drawing, these holes are all located by basic dimensions back to the datum features, the pins. At all of those locations on the gauge, I have holes sized at 270, the virtual condition of those threaded holes, remember? With my gauge over the pins and seated on the datum M feature, I should be able to install some special thread locators into these locations. These thread locators have external threads made at the MMC size of the internal threaded hole, which would be the smallest allowable pitch diameter for class 2B. You get that? A little farther up, they have a precision cylindrical feature, perfectly coaxial to the threads. This is sized at 250, the major diameter of the threads. And then you can see where these locators would have to be within the virtual condition of the position tolerance. Let's go back to part GDTG00402, the part I talked about in the last video. This is the part that's on the other side of that interface that we've been talking about. This gauge I showed you toward the end of that video also has virtual condition holes. These can be used to inspect the position of the screw clearance holes. Instead of thread locators, these are closer to being like a simple gauge pin, also sized at the virtual condition. The pins have to be able to go through the clearance holes in the part and into the gauge without interference. Did you notice that the virtual condition for these holes is the same 270 as the virtual condition for the threaded holes in the other part? This VC matching is where it all comes together and makes gd and all worthwhile. So let's look at what I've done. I've designed two parts that locate on a straightforward six degree of freedom interface. I've applied tolerances and found the virtual conditions for all of those locating features. I used the virtual conditions to apply sizes to the hole and slot to guarantee a fit over the pins. I've applied datum references to the locating features, the real, actual locating features, and the ones that correspond to each other from one part to the next. The math is all there to guarantee that these parts are going to fit together. When you go to assemble GDTG00402 onto GDTG00401, the screws are definitely not going to bind up on the clearance holes. And if they do, it won't be my fault as the designer. This seems like a small victory, but really, it's huge. Because you need your parts to fit together. You don't want to do rework. You don't want to drill out these holes after the part's been anodized. Ouch! So I would say learn this math. Learn these methods. Learn these symbols and callouts. Learn how to adjust the numbers up and down to produce the loosest reasonable tolerances that will satisfy your requirements. And then in the next video, I'll talk about some variations on this particular interface 
which in some cases may be preferable. Until then, this is the GD&T Guy signing out. <music>